Greetings. I'm Chet Rehal. Today I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Kopetsky. He's Professor of Medicine and Consultant in Preventive Cardiology here at Mayo Clinic. Steve is also the current president for the Society for Preventive Cardiology here in the U.S. Steve and I are going to be discussing erectile dysfunction and its impact on cardiovascular prognosis and diagnosis. Steve, welcome. Thank you, Chet. Steve, there's been a lot in the literature and in the lay media about erectile dysfunction. Of what importance is that to the cardiovascular specialist? And in particular, I'm referencing the meta-analysis that you published a couple of years ago. Yes, thanks, Chet. You know, erectile dysfunction is one of these things we haven't really talked about much in the cardiology office, but we're finding that it is a harbinger of coronary artery disease. For instance, if you're a 70-year-old man and you have, uh, have erectile dysfunction, your risk is increased maybe 1, 2, 1 1.4 times is your risk for coronary disease. But if you're a 40-year-old man and have erectile dysfunction, your risk for coronary disease is 40 to 50 times higher. Steve, so just so I'm hearing you correctly, yeah. you said that for a younger patient in their 40s with erectile dysfunction, portends a risk 40 to 50 times higher than usual for coronary disease. Correct, for, uh, for another man just like him. Yeah. So it's really a, a, a s symptom that comes up that we tend to brush under the rug sometimes and laugh about. We really need to tell our patients and ourselves and our referring doctors and say, this is a time we can really do something for the patient to help them, not just their erectile dysfunction, but also their heart. So Steve, what should, be, what should we be doing in the office then when patients tell us about this history? What's the next step? Well, I think when we hear about it, uh, that we need to act on it and look at their cardiovascular risk factors. Why? Because the risk factors for erectile dysfunction and for coronary disease are basically exactly the same. Diabetes, overweight, lack of exercise, poor diet, hypertension, etc. So we need to start working on those risk factors. And what I found is when I talk to a patient about their risk for heart disease, they say, okay, yeah, where, where's my stent and my statin? But I talked about erectile dysfunction. They perk up. They start to listen. They say, gee, what do I need to do, doctor? So, so what do you do then as in, in the next step of your evaluation? Do you go immediately to aggressive secondary uh, treatments, or are there other things that, that we should be doing? Well, the first thing is uh, look at when they've, how long they've had erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction seems to precede coronary disease by about three to five years, which is a nice thing to know because if you have a patient who's had ED for a year or two, say, wow, we need to start doing something before you really have a manifestation of coronary disease. And they start to listen to that, and we can do stress tests, we can look at them, certainly be very aggressive with their risk factors. I think that's, that's the key thing is to start talking to them about lifestyle and risk factors. Now, you mentioned our article we published earlier. We found that if you work on your coronary disease risk factors, we said, what effect does that have on erectile dysfunction? And within about two years, we found that it's equivalent to taking 25 milligrams of Viagra <laughs> in terms of it improves your, your erectile function. Yeah. If you, you know, lose some weight, get your risk factors under control. Well, that's, that's really remarkable, Steve. Now, what about the medications that are used to treat ED? Are there cardiovascular complications that we need to be aware of, maybe paying more specific attention to? Yes. Well, clearly, the uh, drugs that we use can affect uh, things like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. They can increase afterload, uh, or the, the, the afterload, the uh, obstruction can increase and mm -hmm. cause symptomatic mm -hmm. problems like uh, vasovagal or mm -hmm. lightheadedness or mm -hmm. actually syncope, especially after sex. Mm. And of course, the interaction with nitrates is well known. Yes, we have to be very careful with nitrates and not give them 24 hours before or after or vice versa, the drugs we use for ED. Steve, how often in your practice have you noticed that there are vascular causes for ED that can be treated endovascularly. Have you come across that in your practice? Well, you know, it is interesting, and that's part of the hypothesis. Why, why does ED, why is that a bellwether for coronary disease? You know, the penile arteries are one to two millimeters. The coronary arteries, as you know well, are three to four millimeters. So maybe it's starting to show up a little bit earlier. And there is some data showing that uh, some folks have used some drug-looting stents to start to treat some of the smaller arteries that cause erectile dysfunction with good results. Interesting. Steve, so uh, to summarize, what would be the top two or three messages that you'd like to deliver to the cardiology community yeah. regarding ED? Yeah, first is that if you hear of ED, it raises your patient's risk for coronary disease no matter what the patient is. It's an increased uh, risk factor, especially the younger they are, the more it increases their risk. And it's really helpful in the intermediate risk patients. You know, the ones that have a lot of disease, we, we don't really need to know much more about them. But the intermediate risk, I'll always ask them, do you have any erectile dysfunction, maybe early on? If they do, then I'm much more aggressive. The second thing is, I think it's important to talk to the patients about it. 
and say this is an artery problem, it's a blood flow problem. This is in a smaller artery starting to occur earlier than the heart arteries. So we really need to work on it now. Let's not wait till later. And you know, patients aren't that concerned about heart attacks sometimes, but they're very concerned about ED, so they tend to pay attention. And also with spouses. You know, I saw a patient the other day and, and he said I had some discomfort when I was raking leaves and I stopped. And his wife said, honey, I was raking leaves with you. I didn't, you didn't tell mm. me that's why you stopped. But it's very hard for the husband to hide from the spouse the ED. And take that as a teachable moment, so to speak, to say let's do something for your, for your, not only for your ED, but also for your heart. And let's see the doctor. So you incorporate it as part of your routine history taking routine for every a cardiac patient, patient right? Every and patient. Yeah, and then you use that as a motivational thing for the patient's risk factors as well as a diagnostic prompt as well. Correct. It's a risk Terrific. stratifier. Terrific. My guest today has been Dr. Steve Kopetsky. This conversation has been very enlightening and I hope you found it as useful as I have. I'd like to thank you for uh, your attention and invite you to continue to watch more Mayo Clinic videos on theheart.org. Thank you.